Now that Copilot is available on Office 365 apps, do I still need to learn Excel? Now this is the question that is definitely popping off at the moment. And in this video, we are going to take a look at some of the features as well as limitations for Copilot within the Office 365 apps. Now, a quick note before we get started, then you do need to either have a Copilot Pro or Copilot for Microsoft 365 account. I have also included a link in the video description so that you can follow along in this video. And with that being said, let's nerd out. At Amy's Animal Shop, I have been tasked to analyze this data set of Q4 sales. Now you're going to notice on the top right that my Copilot button is grayed out. And the reason for that is because all documents need to be saved within the cloud. So if we head on up to file, then we can go save a copy and we can save this to OneDrive. Alternatively, you can save it to SharePoint and that way this data is gonna be stored within the cloud and we can work on it with Copilot. We'll just save that here. And now we can see that Copilot button is clickable. So if we click on Copilot, then the first thing that we're going to see is that we need to convert this data range to a table. So we already have a array of data here that can easily be put into a table, but you'll notice that if we click outside of that data set, then it's going to say that we need to select data in an Excel table. So Copilot only works within a table of a data set in Excel. So if we click back in, then we can head on over to convert. And now this is going to change this data into something that we can now analyze with Copilot. One thing that I did want to note is that when you are working with Copilot, you're going to want to ensure that all of your columns have appropriate headers as Copilot will rely on those to analyze the data. So I'm just going to rename all of these and now we can see that they all appropriately reflect what the actual column is. All right, now the good stuff is coming and we can finally have some fun. I just want to draw your attention to this quantity code column and we can see here that it's got this little coding and then actually the unit of sales. So if we wanted to, for example, calculate revenue or profit or even the cost of the goods sold, then we're not going to be able to do that because this column here has this code in front of it that will prevent us from calculating the actual sales. For Copilot, if we want to simply ask them to create a column for quantity sold, then we can see what is going to generate here. Now, Copilot is a little bit slow, uh, so we do just need to bear with it. Copilot has generated something, so if we just hover over this insert column, then we can actually see here that it is pulling the number of quantity sold. So if we click insert column, then we can now have that visible. This formula is a great example that can be applied to names if you have a first and a last name and you want to combine them or separate them. Similarly with like addresses such as cities if you want to extract the country or even dates. So if you wanted to extract the month, then all of these similar sort of prompts can be done for all of that type of data. Now that we have that quantity sold column added, the quantity code column is a bit irrelevant, but we don't want to delete the column because this is pulling a formula from there. What if we ask Copilot if they can hide that quantity code column for us? Amazing. So now we can see that Copilot has added a formula column to this table. Now, what if we actually wanted to undo that? So if we could ask Copilot if we can undo those changes, and unfortunately that is a limitation within Copilot. So it can't undo any changes, but if you did want to, you know, for example, unhide that or even undo that formula, then you can just toggle the undo and redo buttons at the top. Now, the next feature that I wanna show you is dual purpose. So first of all, we are going to use this microphone. Can we add a column for profit? So this is how you can just use voice commands within Copilot. Here, I'm giving it the word I want profit and Copilot is actually analyzing the headers within this table to identify that, hey, we've got the sales price, we've got the cost per unit, and we also have the quantity sold. So here is a formula. And if you wanted to, you could view an explanation of this formula, but I'm going to just hover over it. And we can see here that if we insert that, then that is actually calculating the profit. So Copilot is pretty intelligent in that sense. And if you click within the cell, then you can see that this is saying, hey, we're taking that sales price, 
minus the cost per unit and we are timesing it by the quantity sold. So yay, Copilot. Now that we've taken a look at some of those different formula columns that can be added to our table as well as some voice commands. Next, we're going to move on to this highlight option here. So Copilot is prompting that we can show items with dog food or we could even bold the first column. But what if I want to highlight the top and bottom three profits to be able to easily identify some of my top selling items? All right, so we can see that Copilot is working here. So we can see here that we have these top three highlighted. There's actually four green ones, but Copilot has recognized that this 105 uh, matches that 105. So we have two items in the third top three, and then the three bottom ones are red. These are some great ways that we can add visual aspects to our table so that we can easily identify certain information. So now let's take a look and see how we can get Copilot to help us sort and filter. Now what if we want to sort this information so that we have the profits highest to lowest? This is going to tell us what the most profitable sales items were for the Q4 period leading up to the Christmas holidays. So we can see here that those reindeer antlers are at the top and they are quite significantly higher than everything else. Now what if we want to narrow this down to just the Christmas category? So we can now ask Copilot to filter for the Christmas category only. Great, so now we still have that profits being sorted highest to lowest, and we're just showing those Christmas category items. So Copilot is definitely able to identify what these column headers are, and they're able to apply sorts or filters to the data based on our verbal prompts. And now that we have all of these filters applied, what if we ask Copilot to remove all filters? Now we have those filters being removed and we can see all of our row items here. Moving on to our final component of Copilot within Excel. Let's take a look at how we can analyze our data. So if we click on the analyze, we can see that Copilot has provided a couple of suggestions. If you're not sure where to start, you can just ask an open-ended question that's saying, what are some insights? So Copilot has now suggested that they think that a nice insight will be sales price by date, which honestly, that's not that helpful for me, but depending on your data, Copilot might be able to provide some insight that could be more valuable. So let's try being a little bit more specific and asking Copilot to show me profit by date. All right, so now we have this profit by date suggestion, which looks like exactly what I've wanted. So here we can click add to a new sheet and Copilot is going to create a new sheet within this workbook that's going to show us the profits for each day within this quarter. Now this looks like something that you could give your boss and show off your amazing Excel skills. And if you are enjoying this video, then I would absolutely love it if you could give it a thumbs up. It really helps this video get more traction as well as subscribe to my channel to be notified on recent uploads. But if we want to analyze this further, we're going to see here that Copilot is giving us an option to go back to the table where we could submit a new response. And if we go back to this table, then we can see here that Copilot does not yet work with pivot tables. Sounds like that's something that's going to be coming in the future because pivot tables are definitely more advanced. So if we want to analyze this pivot table and chart further, then we can go to show field list. And this is that familiar pivot table area where we could then manually adjust for the filters that we want. But if we head on back to the main table, then we can be more specific and we can say, hey, can you show a chart for Christmas profit by date? So this is now going to generate that pivot chart using basic language. So once again, we can see that it's saying profit by date for the category Christmas. Yes, that sounds exactly what I'm looking for. So we can see here that we have this category at the top, which is Christmas. I do just want to note that sometimes Copilot might not be entirely accurate, so I would just recommend double checking it. It is a co-pilot and not the main pilot. So we can see here that that's Christmas. These are those dates, and then this is the sum of profit. That is awesome. Back in the main table, one of the questions or prompts that Copilot provides is this, are there any outliers in my data? And I think that that is just a great tool that I have found in, in Copilot that easily analyzes the data and will identify if there are any outliers that are completely, you know, um, an anomaly within your data set. 
So in this case, it's actually creating a nice chart, which is awesome. <laughs> so we can see here that the profit has outliers on these dates, but then it's also saying that I couldn't determine if there were any outliers. So um, a little bit confusing there, but if we head on over to this add to a new sheet, then we can definitely see that these two dates here do have some outliers. So that could prompt us to look a little bit further into those dates and identify any potential reasons why. So now that we've taken a look at some of the ways that Copilot can help us, but what about some of the limitations? For example, whenever you're working with a large data set, or especially if you're going to be diving into any pivot tables and you want to make sure that you are removing any duplicate values because this is going to skew your data. So you can see up here that I have asked Copilot to identify duplicate rows with the same data item and category and quantity. And it's saying, yes, it can help me, but it, it actually can't do it but it is directing me to the area within Excel that will help me achieve what I'm asking it to. Another important piece when we are working with more advanced features of Excel, such as pivot tables, is identifying any blank values because a blank value is not going to be filtered when we are actually analyzing this data. So here I'm asking Copilot if it can identify any blank cells, and once again, it's not able to do this, but it is providing us with the instructions. And last but not least, another thing that we often use Excel for is looking up content in a different table. So this is where we would use XLOOKUP or HLOOKUP or VLOOKUP to pull data from one table set to another. And so I'm just going to ask Copilot if that is a feature that it can help us with. And here we go. Yes, you can, but we're going to need to do it ourselves. At this stage, we're still going to have to understand these different lookup functions. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. And I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. Overall, Excel is a very complex system and it has been around for nearly four decades. So if you have ever used a language model, if you are watching this video, then I do suspect that you have and you will have experienced some limitations of that as well as potential blips. So it's important for us to remember that it is a co-pilot and you are the pilot. So it can definitely help us get on the right foot but we still need to have a foundation for understanding Excel and understanding the concepts that it is using within the model in order to successfully use Excel to its full potential. So thank you again for watching this video. We will catch you next time.